Hello guys, welcome back to uh, Rain Dogs Reviews and today I'm going to show you how to set up uh, your Amiga onto Launchbox. Um, four days ago I posted a video uh, with how my setup is progressing so far and uh, I've had um, one or two emails, in fact more than that, um, asking me about the setup I've done so far and a lot of people have asked me how to get the Amiga working on LaunchBox um, because they can't get it to work. And uh, that's always been a pain of mine as well as the Amiga. Um, it's, uh, it's a hard emulator to, to get working without any front end uh, to worry about as well. Uh, but I was always using uh, Win U A is the UAE, whatever it's bloody called, and uh, it's it's hard to set up. Um, I mean, I've been watching Simply Austin's videos, and he even he said he had you know trouble setting up uh, the Amiga, and it is a bit of a doozy. Um, so on my travels across the web, uh, I came across a different um, emulator uh, called FS UAE. Uh, which I find so much easier to configure because it confi configures itself uh, automatically, really. There's not much uh, twiddling that you need to do with it. And not only that, it seamlessly just connects to LaunchBox with no command lines, with really nothing for you to do. It is plug and play in a sense. So I thought I'd show you a video on how easy it is to actually get the Amiga working. Uh, so we'll, we'll crack on in and give it a go. So I've got my launch box already open for you and you can see how my setup is progressing um, on launch box. And as you can see, I have got the Amiga and Amiga 32, uh, a CD32 setup. Um, I've been importing my games slowly but surely, getting the artwork and the videos and all that good stuff. Um, I've done loads for the Amiga, as you can see. Um, I've only done one for the Amiga CD32 uh, because it's just I haven't been bothered with it yet. I've been getting everything else set up um, slowly but surely. Uh, but they all, all work. They work seamlessly with uh, with LaunchBox, um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So, of course, the first thing you're going to need to do is to download the emulator itself. So, uh, just open up uh, Internet. Uh, Explorer or Edge, whatever Windows you're using, and just type in FS UAE. And there he is, the top one uh, there, FS UAE Amiga emulator. So click on him there, uh, which will present you with this, uh, this website, which will give you a lot of information of what uh, they've done so far with FS UAE, uh, how it's progressing, how it's working, what facilities it has and all that good stuff um, but what we care about is obviously downloading the emulator so uh, what you could do you can go here and download the latest releases here if you want to but FS UAE comes in two configurations if you want to call it that um, it comes in just the emulator alone with no GUI and a portable uh, version of FS UAE which does have a GUI so I always use the portable version because it's again just much easier to use with the uh, graphical user interface so uh, just click on download at the top right hand corner of your screen and then you can see look there's the two versions I was referring to there's the portable version and there's just the emulator version with no configuration GUI so what you want to do is download the portable version so you can either download it for your 32-bit windows or your 64-bit windows. I've got a 64-bit windows version. So I've clicked on this link here and I've downloaded the, uh, the portable emulator. So once you've downloaded the portable emulator, I'll just get rid of that now. Let me just bring up me, uh, me emulators. You will get a, a file like this. I do believe it comes in a in a um, like a RAR, so you might have to uh, unzip it. But when you do, it'll come up in a format like this, which I've then cut and pasted into my emulators onto my arcade um, external hard drive. 
so just double click into the folder and this is what it'll look like. So you've got two applications, two exe files, one's called Arcade and one is called Launcher. So it's the launcher that you want to double click on, which will bring up the, the, the GUI. Um, and if I'm completely honest guys, you don't need to touch this in any way, shape or form. What's so brilliant about US, uh, FS UAE is it already comes pre-configured in a sense. Uh, there is one or two bits and bobs you need to do, but nothing too drastic. It automatically as well um, uh, configures a Xbox controller, so you don't have to worry about any configuration. You can change it if you really need to, um, but you don't have to because it comes pre-configured, unless the buttons are not in the format you want them to be, and you can just configure it yourself. So uh, first thing you need to do really is once you've launched the launcher, is you want to go to this little uh, icon here, which is a little drop down, and you want to go to settings. So when you go to settings, uh, especially if you're going to be using this over a front end, is if you go to advanced video, and all you want to do then is change your full screen mode uh, to desktop full screen, because I do believe if memory serves me right, it comes pre-configured as a window but obviously none of us want to play on a window we want to play it full screen especially if we're playing on an arcade cabinet so just change it to uh, full screen desktop and and bob's your uncle that's all you really need to do regarding the uh the settings themselves as i said because it automatically comes pre-configured with uh your xbox controller but if you do want to change the buttons around on your xbox controller because they're not the buttons are not where you'd like them to be uh, just go to joysticks and gamepads. As you can see, it's automatically detected my Xbox One controller. All you need to do is double click on it and just change the buttons around and save it. It is as simple as that. Uh, far, far easier than the other uh, Amiga emulator. I'm sure you can all agree. So let me just get rid of that because I've already configured my Xbox One controller the way I like it. But it's as simple as double clicking on it and change the buttons around. Super, super simple. So the only other thing you really need to do is, um, again, on your little uh, icon here to bring down the drop down menu, is to import the kickstarts or your kickstart files. Now, of course, you can buy them via Amiga Forever, uh, officially buy them and get them all. And all you need to do then is click on Amiga Forever import, go to the file that uh, where all your kickstarts are and and link them to that that uh, folder or if you've taken the time to go around google and fishing around the internet and getting all the kickstarters yourself just import kickstarts uh, you don't even have to do that if you don't want to if you know where your kickstarts are already you can literally just cut and paste them into the kickstarts folder as you can see as i've done there so either way you can either import them through the gui I'll just copy and paste them into the Kickstarts folder. Whatever you want to do, whatever's easier for you. If I'm honest, because I already had the Kickstarts for my old hype spin setup, I just cut and paste them into the Kickstarts folder. And then what it does then, which I find is pretty cool as well, if I just reopen up the launcher again, um, is if I go in and um, import Kickstarts, which is where you can browse and find where your Kickstarts folder is. I don't need to do that because I cut and paste them into the Kickstarts folder myself. It then tells you what Kickstart files you now have. So as you can see, I've got all of them apart from the Amiga 3000. I've got all the Kickstarts for the different Amiga versions. So it even tells you what you've what you've got and what you haven't got if you've been missing any files, which is pretty cool. And if I'm honest, guys, that's all you need to do. It is as simple as that regarding the emulator. Again, just download it, go into the launcher. Um, settings, advanced video, change it to full screen desktop, configure your controller if you really, really want to. You don't need to do that because it comes pre-configured. I just make sure that you put all your kickstart files into the kickstart folder within the, uh, within the emulator, uh, itself. That is it. That is done. Simples, pimples. Then, of course, all you need to do then is build it into the front end which again is like any other emulator that you've done in um, 
launch box or big box, it, there's really no big difference. But I'll talk you through it anyway, just in case we've got any newbies. So what you're going to do is go into your launch box, of course. Uh, go into your tools. Import a ROM file. And then you're going to bring up the, the ROM uh, file wizard. Uh, click next to the first screen. And then when you get to the select the files to import, go to add files. Find where your Amiga um, ROMs are. In my case, they're on my G drive, which is my external hard drive. System ROMs, Amiga. And as you can see, that there's all my Amiga ROMs there. They're all in, a, again, a WinRAR type file. You don't have to unwrap them. Uh, the emulator will do that for you. Just get your, your ROMs. Uh, wherever you're getting them from, of course, legally, if you should own the, the ROMs, you know, the games before you can download a, a ROM copy, but you know, each to their own. So then you're going to select a game you want to, you want to port over, whatever the case may be. Um, you can select multiple ones if you want. Doesn't really matter. You can do one at a time. I tend to do one at a time because I always make sure that the game is working before I move on. Um, because I don't want a, a, an arcade setup where I got friends or family members or my kids come out, you know, uh, uh, play on the arcade machine and they click on the game and it crashes because the, the you know it's not working correctly. So I want every single game to work on my arcade setup. So anyway, uh, you're going to click on a game, for example, uh, you're going to open them up. So as you can see now, it's told um, launch box where the uh, game is situated g drive which is my external system roms amiga battle chess so once you've selected the roms you want to port over you're going to click next and on the platform of imported roms you of course want to click on amiga there he is there and then click next and then when you come to choose an emulator as you can see mine's already in there because i've already done this of course but you won't have FSUAE to start off with. You're going to have to tell LaunchBox to use this emulator in order to play that ROM. So what you're going to do, now you've added a ROM. Let's now add the emulator that we want to play it on. So you're going to click Add. In the emulator name, just type in FSUAE. In the emulator application path, just browse find where your emulator is so in this case mine's in emulators on my external hard drive uh, in fs uae portable suite launcher and open and then you can see look i've told the uh a launch box where the application path is all you need to do then is go to your associated platforms in the associated platform field, type in Amiga. Make sure that is the default emulator that you want to use Amiga ROMs on and click OK. I've seen it's saying it already exists because I've already done this, but you get the gist. And then once that's all done, it will be available in this little uh, drop down. So you've got the emulator name uh, filled in. You've got the emulator application path filled in and you've got the associated platforms filled in. Just click OK to that and then it'll be available on your emulator list. Just choose then FSUAE. Click Next. Use the file in its current location. And then regarding the metadata, use LaunchBox Game Database on Wikipedia. Find, you know, you can select, this is entirely up to you, select whatever uh, artwork you want. I always do my artwork later. I'd make sure the game is working first. Uh, I'm just going to go through Emmy Movies as well. If you've got an Emmy Movies account, which I have, but yet again, I'm going to select none because uh, I do the artwork later, as I said, because I like to make sure the game's working first. Click next. Click next. There's the game. Click finish. And give it a few seconds, and then it should tell me that that game's been imported successfully. There 
any second now. And there we are. Now that game is there. There he is. So all I gotta do then is get the artwork for it and all that good stuff. Oh, let me turn that down a bit. Um, and it's, it, that's it guys. It's, it's as simple as that. So if I just run a game for you to just confirm it is working. So, um, I don't know. What game can I play? What's one of my faves? I can't find it. Uh, I'm looking for Shadow of the Beast. There he is. It's one of my favourite Amiga games. So I'm just going to double click on Shadow of the Beast just to confirm. It's loading um, FSUE. And there we are. Bish Bash Boss. Jobs are good. And like I said, it's already been pre-configured with the Xbox controller as well. I don't need to ch touch the configuration files, strictly speaking, again, unless you want to change your buttons yourself. And that, that's it, guys. It, it's as simple as that. Much easier than using WinUE, which I think it's called. Because uh, that one is a, a bloody doozy to sort out. I, just, I didn't really touch the, the configuration files in the emulator at all. All I did was switch it to full screen add my kickstart uh, ROMs in and that was it so I hope this helped because I know a lot of people uh, struggled getting the uh, Amiga to work um, with or without a front end uh, but but there you go uh, any more questions guys can you can email me you can uh, just comment on the video um, if you are going to take the time to comment or email me for any extra help or any other tutorials with different emulators please you know give me the courtesy of subscribing to the channel as well I'm trying to build the channel up as much as I can um, and I'll be happy to help so again guys until the next video I shall see you later